Then you have the technology that airplanes are made out of. Evolve Stone uses that airplane technology. And what that does is when we tell our material to go from a liquid to a solid, it forms an irreversible molecular change, which gives you these unbelievable physical attributes. Welcome to the Construction Disruption Podcast, where we uncover the future of building and remodeling. I'm Seth Heckeman with Isaiah Industries. This is my co-host, Todd Miller. Recently, nearly 100,000 suppliers, builders, architects, and contractors uh, converged in Orlando, Florida for the absolutely huge uh, 2022 International Builder Show. Uh, This is the show where some of the newest and most innovative building materials are unveiled. It is, in many respects, a show of disruptors. This year, one product was recognized both as best in show and the most innovative building material, and that was Evolve Stone, a stone veneer system for both interior and exterior applications that is noted for its incredible speed of installation, as well as its good looks. On this episode of Construction Disruption, we're very fortunate to have Greg Fritz, the CEO of Evolve Stone, and Tyler Baer, uh, their national sales manager. Greg and Tyler, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to Construction Disruption. Hey, thanks for having us. Thank you. So best of show and most innovative uh, are obviously very distinguished honors. Going into the show, did you expect to come home with those awards? Is that what you were aiming for? The whole thing still at this point in time is still somewhat surreal. Um, you know, you wake up in the morning or, or after your two hour nap to go do some more work and, and, you, and it pops into your head and it's still, I don't think it's sunk in for any of us as of yet. And, and honestly, we were just honored to be a finalist, uh, you know, so many, so many amazing, uh, products out there and, and some big companies that, that are pushing hard all the time to innovate. And we, we honestly said, if we just were a finalist, we're, we're good to go. And then, uh. Uh, and then as the show progressed and you start seeing uh, more camera crews coming over randomly and, and you know, you're starting to get a feel that you might have a shot at this and uh, actually to uh, to take most innovative w- was remarkable. And then and then best in show, I still don't grasp it. That is fantastic. And for anyone who has not been to the Builder Show, this this is a huge deal uh, for you all. This is an incredible show. Anybody and everybody is represented. So uh, that's fantastic. And obviously, you guys were telling us before we started rolling today what this recognition has meant for you uh, here the last couple of weeks. You alluded to it, the, uh, the two-hour nap you get at night before <laughs> you get rolling again, trying to follow up. But had you been to the Builder Show showing this product, you know, a version of this product before? So, um, no, we, it actually is the first time that we really actually showed, we, we, we went to, uh, the JLC show in, uh, in late, uh, in August, 2021, but bad time to really have a show, right? Vacation time. And that's a boots and suspenders show. So, um, it wasn't, you know, I would say it was a little, a little tricky there, but still the response from the show was fantastic, but we'd never really hit it mainstream until IBS. So yeah, I, I would say that's our first major show. Very cool. Well, tell us, let's back up a little further. Tell us the history of Evolve Stone, your company, and um, you know the development of this now uh, nationally, internationally recognized uh, new product of yours. Right. So what's really unique about us is we're, st- by trade, we're actually builders. So a very high-end uh, custom builder out of the Mid-Atlantic called Horizon Builders. Um they're actually a William S. They're the first builder ever to be inducted into the William S. Marvin Hall of Fame and to have won the uh, the custom home builder of the year. So, you know, two two top notch accolades. And really what's come from that is how do you build and how do you build right? And about 20 years ago, my father, the founder of the company, um, set on this journey to just learn everything he could about building science because he was sick of you know, he's sick of getting in trouble with, with a leak, you know, and these clients, if they're not happy with you, they squish you, right? So, you know, these are some some billionaires all day long. And so you need to do things right. And and it's funny, I joke around 
you and I might might go, uh, you know, go play golf or something like that. My father is out there with a bucket of waterproofing, you know, trying to figure out how to how to make a better detail. And uh, and that passion, really his passion um, drove us um, in the direction of being able to take such a unique material. Right. Being able to take such unique material. And how does it work from a building science perspective? And why does this system work? And and why is it going to be around for a long time? So, you know, you're, you're disrupting the industry with with how this this product is installed and then and then to have the building science behind it. And then on top of it, this material has actually been in existence for uh, around 25 years in the very high end theming world. And that's what got us interested in it was. Um, Hey, this stuff fooled us. And, and we're these high end builders and we see every every finish that money can buy. And this product legitimately fooled us. And one thing led to another. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up starting off with the we ended up starting off with the license deal with the patent holder. Uh, we spent a couple of years learning more about what we had. Uh, and then we uh, we back in 2015, we acquired all the IP and said, hey, we're going to make a run at this. So how unique. So you're, you're disrupting an entire industry with how your product installs and normally what happens with disruptors. And we all remember the, when, when, when PVC trim came about, right. Everyone, or, and when PVC started replacing wood, everyone freaked out. This isn't going to work. What's going to happen. Da, 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 da. And, and there wasn't a lot of history behind how that material was going to work long-term. And obviously it seems to have worked out pretty well, you know, in the composites and, for us to be able to go to market and say, hey, this is a brand new product to the building industry, but we have 25 real world, 25 years of real world experience as to how this material is going to perform. It, it just makes it that unicorn type of a product. And the reception is unbelievable. And, and just kind of to add to that is, you know, we're so disruptive because now we have a siding contractor or a carpenter contractor installing this, you know, juxtaposed to a masonry contractor. And then we actually, oddly, we have some masonry contractors that really like it for the interior, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a really big hit, but it has been very disruptive to the traditional lumberyard channel. So we understand, you know, the uniqueness of the installation aspect. Um, tell us a little bit more about that, but also tell us about some of the other unique benefits of Evolve Stone over competing products and more traditional stone veneers that are out there. Sure. I'd say let's start with the technology of it. So you have, I like to say if I, so we're, we're classified as a, we call it, if someone says, what is Evolve Stone? I say it is a specialty patented composite, right? But a composite can mean a lot of things. Uh, you know, you mix glue together with sawdust and you just created technically by definition a composite, right? Mm -hmm. What really truly makes a Volstone different is if I was to give a class in plastics, the very first thing I'd write at the top of the, the chalkboard is the word plastic. And then there's two major disciplines in the plastic industry. This technology, which is your HDPE, your, your vinyls, uh, your PVCs, right? That lives here. Then you have the technology that airplanes are made out of. Evolve Stone uses that airplane technology. And what that does is when we tell our material to go from a liquid to a solid, it forms an irreversible molecular change, which gives you these unbelievable physical attributes. So to your question, out of the box, the product is moisture impermeable. So I always say we spend all of this time um, building these enclosures right. You know, you're waterproofing it right. You're, you're flashing it right. And then we don't pay attention to a lot of things after that. And then you're taking materials that almost could be classified as sponges and you're pushing them up against this thing that you just spent all this time trying to keep water out of. So the moisture impermeable aspect of it's fantastic. Um, the pro and because of that, it's not affected by freeze thaw. It, it's very UV resistant. Um, expansion and contraction, this is fantastic. So through a temperature swing of a hun uh, negative 40 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to have expansion and contraction of less than half a percent. So that is that is very, very, salt, uh, very small uh, salt spray. It's not affected by salt spray. It's very chemical resistant. Um, and and it it works with your, uh, you know, it cuts with your standard woodworking tools and it's color throughout. 
So when you do make that cut, you're not seeing a white aggregate below the surface. And then, and then from a building science perspective, truly part of a system. So a type one or type two WRB followed by an eighth inch uh, rain screen with a hydrophobic fabric over it. And that really is the key behind why this entire system works. And one thing that building science has taught us over all these years is that I don't care what you do, water is always going to find a way in. But two things, two things that it's going to keep you out of trouble. Number one, does it have the ability to drain? And number two, does it have the ability to dry? No hydrostatic pressure, no leak. Well, yeah, you you mentioned it earlier, you know, having a 25 year track record with this with this material that has all these attributes and you can point to the history on the market to prove it uh, has been obviously been a huge head start for you all. And marrying that with these unique installation procedures that decrease the skill, you know, uh, don't mean it condescendingly, but maybe take some of the skill out of it or at least expand the the skilled range of who can put this up. Tell us more about that and what the unique angles you brought to market uh, on the installation side. Sure. So that it's no it's no secret that um, the lack of skilled labor is plaguing our industry. And what is more frustrating than having 10, 10 plus years of backlogged work that we can't ever seem to capitalize on? That's that's frustrating. And, you know, I think, I think forever ago, forever ago, we started telling people that if you don't, if you don't have a college degree, then you're never going to turn any, turn into anything. Well, I can tell you, I can go find 40 accountants right now, but I can't find a master carpenter to save my life. So with that, we're having to innovate as, as, as manufacturers and as an industry to, you know, how are we going to accomplish, you know, how are we going, how are we going to accomplish our goals with, with these, you know, essentially these hindrances and uh, this product, I'm not saying there's no skill, but it is low skill. And uh, my, my favorite, my favorite story and Tyler's probably heard it 10,000 times is uh, whenever I'm giving a, a presentation, we, we run this side by side uh, comparison video, which shows evolved stone being compared against traditional, uh, against traditional uh, mortar, a mortar system, uh, lick and stick. And what happens in this video is, and so most manufacturers would pick their most skilled guy to be the people installing this. Nope, not us. We just called the, I, I called my father and I said, hey, who, who's the local guy you're getting you know, help from? And he goes, here they are. I go, I need two guys for these days. And, and these guys show up. And, uh, and here we are, I got all these camera crews, I got three camera crews running around all this, all this money being spent. And, uh, and here we go, you know, one, two, three action and the time is rolling and, uh, these guys start installing the stone. Well, they get about the third way up, uh, they get about to the third course and I watch the guy pick up a stone, bang, bang, stone falls off the wall. So he picks it up, puts it back. Bang, bang, stone falls off the wall. At this point, I am fuming, right? I'm fuming mad. He goes to pick it up a third time and in not such nice select words, essentially, hey, moron, there's no nails in the nail gun. <laughs> and, and, and then, so right, so, so now he's like, oh, okay, all right, I got it. Then he goes over to get nails, doesn't know how to put nails in the gun. And that is our, that was our side-by-side -side comparison. <laughs> So how's, how's that for skilled labor? Yeah, that's hilarious. That great story. So for those listening who don't have, know a little bit already, you know, they're hearing you talk about nail gun for putting up, you know, stone veneer. Give us the kind of the, the quick uh, 30,000 foot on the nuts and bolts of how this comes together. 16 gauge stainless steel finished nail uh, for any exterior application. You put it right onto the face of the stone. You pull the trigger and we have designed the density of the material to allow that nail to recess itself below the surface, making it virtually invisible. And when it comes to interiors, I tell people you can put it up with bubble gum. I don't care. I'm not. <laughs> well, I always love when we happen to sell an interior roof job around here, like a little zoo canopy or something inside a building. That that makes you sleep better at night. Mate. Those going, uh... doesn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. Yep. <laughs> so finishing nails. That's incredible. Obviously, this is must be a very low weight product. Then the right around two pounds a square foot, but it's it's very dirt. You know, a lot of people associate weight with quality and or durability. 
And our product is extremely light, but it's very durable. We actually have a commercial playground company that does nothing except make commercial climbing rocks and climbing boulders. And I say, if a bunch of kids running up and down a surface all day isn't durable, you know, I don't know what is. And, and another thing to add, you know, it's, it's a really great product for DIYers as well as the contractors. So um, if you look at our website, www.evolvestone.com, you can get on there. We have a lot of different videos for DIYers, for contractors. Um, so, you know, it's uh, really opened up a lot of different categories for our product to fit, whether it's interior, exterior, remodeling, new construction, and even now multifamily. Absolutely, Tyler, to your point about the, you know, what people don't want to read anymore. They want to watch videos. And um, we have like 20 or 30 videos on our website and, 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 we, and we take pride in them and we try to make as many as we can. It's just, it's such an easy modern day resource to use and uh, it helps everyone. Craig, you should really hone in on, um, you know, like some of the installer feedback, you know, kind of what, what you've heard from installers. It's, it's very different from other companies. So, so I wanted to give, I wanted to give my, I wanted to give my favorite, um, one of my favorite stories that happened at IBS was, um, uh, you, you get into these pitch groups, right? Where you just see someone, you, you know, they're interested and you just start going, right? And I started, I did, I did that exact same thing. And the guy goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. He goes, I love your product. You don't have to pitch me on it at all. He goes, I've already done six jobs with it. And I go, well, well, what do you do? And he flips over his name tag. He's a roofer, a roofer. And he goes, it's cold where I am. He said, said, I, I, I've been doing some interior work with your product and some accent walls and we love it. And uh, so really, you know, from the perspective of, from the perspective, you know, from being a builder, when but when we were going to take this product to market, we spend a ton of time talking to the installers, finding out what they liked and what they didn't like about what options were available to them. And the second that you tell, you know, so many companies before us have tried to appeal to the siding guy, but the second the siding guy has to take out a grinder, it's game over. You're losing 75% of those guys that's not in their tool bag. They don't want to deal with that. So that was one of the big things was how is the material going to cut? And when we realized that we were able to cut it with a with a standard woodwork, any woodworking tool, multi-tool, bandsaw, um, you know, your 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 table saw, your your miter saw, everything, and, and, and the blade that it comes with. So nothing special about it, nothing, nothing wild. And then we actually even went and took it even further throughout the process. Um all the way down to the packaging, for example. Um, I went and I was visiting stone yards and I wanted to see our competition's product and I'm looking outside in the yard and I go, hey, where is ABC's, you know, stone? And they go, I know they're spending a lot of money to put these things in wax boxes so they can be outside. Why am I not seeing them? And they said, oh, the packaging, even though it's wax, still just kind of looks yucky after a while. The product inside's fine, but the consumer doesn't think that. So we said, well, maybe there's a better way for us to do this. Um, so we actually took an affordable box and we actually individually shrunk wrap the box. And then we realized we just created ourselves another problem. What's the first thing someone's going to do? They're going to take and they're going to put their hands into those handholds, puncturing that seal. And now you really took away you know, the benefit of why you just did that. Now you essentially have a water balloon or a pool. And that really got us thinking to the point where we ended up taking uh, car battery handles and, and we put we shrink wrapped the box, put a car battery handle over it, and you actually can carry two boxes of stone just like you would salt bags. So almost 30 square feet of stone, you're just walking through the job site, you know, because that material's got to get from the street to where you're installing it. So, you know, those are the little tiny things that, once you get this product in front of an installer, that's what they need to see. And we're a value proposition product. We're, our materials substantially, you know, can be substantially more expensive than, than just traditional concrete um, artificial stone. But you have to look at what the on the wall cost is, not just the material. So once you, under, once you are actually able to sit down, put pen to paper when it comes to how the value proposition works, it's remarkable. And, and, how, and how someone estimates it, right? So those guys are figuring waste factors into these numbers. And these waste factors for some of these products can be 
10 to 15 percent, we're averaging around 2 percent, 2 percent waste because every little piece that breaks, even if it does break or you cut it wrong, nothing's wrong with it. It's still reusable. That cut edge has color all the way through. You know, there's nothing you need to do. You don't need to reattach a flange, a connection flange or something like that. There's just the versatility of the product is just pretty extensive. Fantastic. And so smart. You know, we, we mentioned it earlier, the skilled labor shortage, one of the greatest challenges facing our industry. Uh, those of us that are going to be ex uh, successful, engineering, innovating from that installer in mind all the way back upstream, um, that's going to put you well ahead of uh, the rest of the field. Because um, we, we talk about it uh, around here in the metal roofing world all the time. If an installer doesn't like putting up our material, they're going to find one <laughs> one way or another to influence uh, who's ever selling it to sell something different. 100% correct. Yes. You mentioned it earlier, you know, uh, that gentleman at the show has already done six jobs and, you know, building this uh, reputation across the country. What is your go-to-market strategy? How are you promoting the product? Who are you selling through? What does that look like for you right now? We are, we, we're two-step distribution heavily at this point. So um, we, it, it, our footprint being such a young company is pretty remarkable. I think we have, we have sales representation in 40 states and, and, uh, and, and we honestly can get you a product essentially anywhere in the world. So our, uh, which is fantastic because we had no idea that obviously we were going to do what we did last Thursday. And if we hadn't had, if we hadn't had very strong industry partners already in place, this, this could have been a squandered opportunity, but, uh, you know, there, we have awesome, awesome, awesome distributors and dealers. Fantastic. I mean, it, it, one in particular, 84 lumber has just done so much for us, you know, a, along this way, they true industry partner, um, you know, uh, uh, Judy Donnell, uh, is, is she's big with NAHB and she, she loves us and, and we love her and she's always running around talking to everyone about it. And, and 84 lumber was so committed to the product that they actually took a guy named Rich Schmidt and turned him into an in-house specialist where that's what he does. That's his job is just to promote and push evolve stone. And, you know, th these are decisions coming from the top. So, you know, 84 lumber is, is a, has been a class act this whole way through. That's awesome. Good for you all. And uh, good for 84 Lumber, a well-established name looking on to be on the leading edge of things and, and bring a new product into their network. That's fantastic. I'm curious, are there any future developments or, you know, where do we go from here? Uh, you know, you've, you've set the, the mark high. Um, any thoughts on down the road or that you can share with us? Sure, sure. No, we, we, we love the innovation side of it. And the material one, you know, come, come visit us and I'll show you the material. I, I can show you a tree. So keep in mind our, the background of this material was in the very, very high end theming world. So downtown Walt Disney, the top of the T-Rex cafe, there's a mountain range that was replicated using this product, uh, museums, aquariums, zoos, uh, Places, yeah, all uh, very some very very prestigious places where the objective was to truly fool the individual, and I can show you a couple trees that will you, they are not distinguishable from from real to uh, to fake, and so we're reproduction specialists. So what we do is we sit back and go, what is expensive in the construction industry that we could that we could actually uh, make more affordable, but still give you that, that appearance and high performance. And uh, we actually did a teaser at, uh, we did a teaser at the booth and we put, we made uh Shishugiban. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Are you familiar with Shishugiban? I am not, no. So it's a, it's a Japanese uh, art of, of wood preservation. And it, they, you actually take like, cedar you sandblast it and then you have to flame it with a torch and you can take all do all these different visual effects with it um so we made some of that which that stuff normally the material itself is running 20 to 25 bucks a square foot alone then we also brought uh board form concrete uh familiar with board form so so board form would be uh 
once again, these are like ultra luxe. You know, when you when you open up a residential design magazine, this is what you're seeing. These are the finishes where unless you're spending five million bucks or more on your house, you're probably not putting it up because it's so expensive. Well, board form concrete, if, even if you can find someone that can do it, it's where they actually replace those metal forms of the house with stereotypically like oak. And what they'll do is they'll take oak planks, they'll sa- they'll sandblast them again, and they'll make entire forms out of oak planks. Then they get one time and one time only to dump that concrete in there and cast it, right? So, and when it comes out, it's this beautiful mirage of, of wood textures in the concrete. And it's just a very sought off architectural design. Well, we displayed both of those in our booth and I didn't want to discredit the stone, but we had as much interest in that as we did the stone half the time. And, and, and it was, it was remarkable. People just going, I want that. When can I get it? And you got Tyler telling people they're going to get it tomorrow, <laughs> the sales guy. And then me, me, the guy who's got to commercialize it. I'm going, give me a second, give me a second. And, uh, so that's one thing is, you know, let's, let's, that's, you know, that's a different, uh, you know, that's a different play on it. I would say another product that we actually have patents on this one as well. And we caught this early on. The material is so much like natural stone. So one, one point is we say we found a way to consistently manufacture randomness. So when you think about that, how's, you know, how is that a thing, Right. But it's so much like that that when you actually, uh, when you, if you actually take one of our stones and you take a belt sander and you smooth that flat, it looks like marble. So you actually could take this material and turn it into a countertop base to where, guess what? Guy could come out there, have some 30 inch by eight inch long slabs ready to go, take out your existing countertop measure, go outside with his table saw and his hole saw. And replace your countertops, you know, in a day without having to do any any measuring or offsite cutting or anything else like that. So, and you're talking about one guy being able to do this whole job. So we have some tricks up our sleeves for sure. So we're th- this isn't a one hit wonder type of uh, company. That's exciting, intriguing stuff, no doubt about it. Good for you. Absolutely. Well, we're nearing a uh, end of our time here today, but anything else that we didn't touch on that uh, you all wanted to share or other feedback uniqueness about Evolve? Uh, I, I would say that the website's a great tool. We always tell people go there. Um, a lot of time, effort, and energy went went into it, and it's a good resource just to you know learn a lot about the product. All of our testing lives there, our installation guides. Um, uh, videos, videos, tons and tons of videos. So I say, go to the website, see what's going on. We also are big into customer service. So call us, you know, you're, we're do our best to have a live person answer the phone, technical service. You know, it, once again, everyone who works for us used to be a builder, right? They're all builders. So when you, when you pick up the phone, you talk to me, you talk to Dom, you talk to Anthony, you talk to Daniel. These are all people that, that have been building their whole lives. And what's better than, hey, I'm, I'm out here on the job and I'm doing this and I realized I have this weird transition and and what do I do? And there's a great chance that the person who answered the phone is gonna be able to answer your question. So we we, we hang our hats on that and, and kudos to you know everyone who uh, comes to work and, and, and makes this company what it is. Yeah, the one thing I would add is it's really nice. I mean, even at the show where you know, builders are coming up and we speak their language. We're family owned. Um, and we're, uh, you know, that's, that's a big thing. I mean, relationships are everything. And the fact that people can relate to us versus just, you know, shouting out the features and benefits is, uh, actually amazing. So, you know, if you have any questions or concern info at evolvestone, uh, dot com or, uh, you know, go to our website, like Greg said, and I just, I appreciate you guys helping us out with everything. Hey, and you, the best part is I'm going to spend half my time telling you what could go wrong, right? That, that's the builder in me. I'm going, well, this could happen. This might happen over here. This might happen over there. Don't do this. You know, we, that's, that's what we do. That's, you know, we want that positive experience. We want those repeat customers. Um, and, and absolutely, you know, you guys have been great and this was a lot of fun.
Awesome. Quite the combination of uh, innovative technology, customer service, technical expertise. Excited to see what you all continue to do and uh, look forward to seeing what our relationship uh, may bring forth as well. So uh, going to be a lot of fun. So yeah. At, uh, before we wrap up, one last thing, uh, something we like to do here on Construction Disruption is end on a maybe a little bit lighter of a note with our rapid fire question round. So uh, where the there's seven questions range from serious to a little more silly sometimes. Uh, it, audience, as always, if Greg and Tyler agree, uh, they do not know these questions ahead of time, uh, but I have to ask you guys, are you willing to, to roll with us through this? Yeah. Is it for, who's it for, Tyler or me? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going, we're going to alternate. We've got seven questions. Uh, okay. We'll alternate three and three, and then you both will answer the last one. But uh, Great. awesome. Thank you. So, so, Tyler, first question is for you. Favorite day of the week? Monday. Really? Okay. That's awesome. I love Monday. It's, it starts the week off. You get really good coffee, and uh, it's, a, it's a fresh week. Very cool. Greg? Would you rather have invisibility or super strength? Oh, invisible all day. That's a no-brainer. Tyler, is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? Absolutely not. That way you can have the best of both worlds. Absolutely not. <laughs> a a pesca pescatarian. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Greg, a cake or pie? Cake. Favorite flavor of cake? Any cake? It, it, I'm boring. It, it, it would be a white cake with a chocolate frosting. That'd be it. That's a tasty combo. I We just ordered a pink cake, pink icing, pink sprinkle cake for my four-year-old daughter's birthday party this weekend. So we'll, I don't know what flavor that is, but... <laughs> is, is, it, is, it, is it like a strawberry or is it just going to like confuse your brain if it's something else? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> All right, Tyler, big dogs or small dogs? Now that I have kids, small dogs. Before I, before kids, big dogs. We, we've gone through that transition in our house too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we get, I get that. Greg, if you could use any mode of transportation, something you have never used before and in all likelihood will never use uh, in the future, what would it be? A mode of trans. Say this one more time. A mode of transportation. A, yep, a mode of transportation, something you have never used before and in all likelihood will never use, what would it be? Real or, or fake? Any, anything and everything. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be boring. I'm going to say a dragon. <laughs> That's I, awesome. That's not boring. No, I Nothing don't think boring so. about a dragon, especially if you're riding one. That's not boring. <laughs> Come on, man. Game of Thrones style. <laughs> there you go. Very cool. All right. Thank you, guys. One more question for one. Uh, you can both answer. Uh, time of day when you feel you're at your most productive? 9.35 a.m. First thing in the morning, fresh and ready to go. Very good. Well, you guys will uh, have plenty to be doing uh, following up on the interest at the IBS, but happy for you guys. Happy uh, that you're helping lead our entire construction industry forward, uh, setting good examples on all sorts of fronts. And uh, If there's any way we can help you, we, we want to. But congratulations again. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. You know, this 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 was a lot of fun. Thank you guys and thank you our listeners for joining us for another episode of Construction Disruption uh, where we have had Greg and Tyler of Evolve Stone, uh, winners of Best in Show at the 2022 uh, International Builder Show. Uh, as always, uh, if you could uh, leave a review or rating on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever else uh, you are listening to this, it would be much appreciated. And uh, until we are together again, uh, hope you uh, do what you can to move our industry forward and make the world a better place. Take care. God bless. Until next time. Mm -hmm.